could it be? So it was here. All right. We're going to just <laughs> sing a song here while we're waiting or something. All right. You know, we're being recorded and everything. Hey, Tim. We're just now going to start, so uh, I'll get, get, let you get settled in a minute. It just, well, you know, what's five minutes? All right, all right, here we are at the uh, March 8th Finance and Economic Development Committee. He's Mark Weber, Chairman, Jonathan Smith, my left, Tim McCarthy, uh, and Amber Rathburn. And we have Kayla Trago as our Deputy Finance Director, and Kate Sandretto, who likes to be off the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Back there. And uh, I know, that's right. So, um, <clears throat> starting off, well, the approval of last month's minutes. Uh, any objections to the last month's minutes? Nope. Already, so we'll, we'll be accepted and uh, moving on. Uh, Glenn Grisdale's here to talk to us about a CRA transfer. How are you? Thank you. Do I, do I, uh, do I press? I think you're own? good to go. Oh, okay. It's good right. to go, okay. yeah. All right. So, uh, I have just some house cleaning items uh, for you today. Uh, the CRA program requires that the, um, that the agreements be assigned to the proper owners and the county auditor needs that information. So uh, we have a CRA that we had uh, started buying between uh, St. Luke's Hospital and at the time it was Ridgestone. Uh, it was in uh, Harbortown. It started in the summer of 2017. They started the project. It was under the assumption that Ridgestone would assign it to a, uh, an end user, almost like with what we're doing with Toledo Hospital. And they did. They assigned it to J&K St. Luke Property LLC. Of course, it was a holding company. We were just informed that they sold that to a private equity uh, firm out of Illinois. So this is just house cleaning. Okay. Yeah. St. Luke's will still be there? Yep. St. Luke's still is still going to be there. Okay. They, they still have to uh, report on their jobs that are uh, created, and they're doing well. We sent that uh, information out just uh, recently, because we're in the middle of the tax incentive review committee mm -hmm. stuff, uh, the Turk stuff. So we sent that out. They already uh, responded. They sent their school donation agreements in, so everything's fine. This is just simply a transfer agreement and an ordinance that, that allows for us to transfer that to the new property owner. Um, and you have that in front of you. Uh, the new property owner is SEP Perrysburg MLB uh, LLC. And uh, there was a little. Um, house clean that I had to do logistically on the back end because now St. Luke's is McLaren and so oh, I've got new people kind of working there and I've got new people kind of on the, 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 the property ownership side. Um, so we had, uh, we had to get, uh, get together on that but you've got an agreement uh, in front of you that, uh, that, that assigns it over to the new property owner with an ordinance and once that's signed off on, we'll be able to um, send out the school donation agreements to have them reassigned for the duration of the remaining term. Um, and everyone's fine with all the benchmarks. Well, how long is left on that? I think there's um, eight more years. Eight years? That are left on that, yeah. Because we, we monitor um, the previous year. So we're monitoring 2021. And I believe, let's see here. Where is I printed? Maybe I did. When did that start? I think that started in in 19. So you had 19, which started in 20. Well, I think there's seven years left on that. And they've been honoring everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, is that pretty standard on these transfers? Does that happen very often? It, yes. Yeah. Uh, under Ohio Revised Code, there's the two programs. There's the pre-94, mm -hmm. and the pre-94. Basically, once you create a pre-94, everything happens after the development goes in. And they would then um, uh, have the county auditor say, yep, the valuation's there. And they would take your application and they would drop it off in the housing officer's office. And he would say, yep. And they would certify it and send it down to the county auditor. And it would be good for, uh, for the duration of that term. There was no uh, requirement for job creation or nothing like that. You have since created post-94, which allows for us to have legal authority to do school donation agreements and also have follow-on kind of, you know, do you comply with zoning? Are you, you know, you're doing those things? Are you being a good steward? Are you creating the jobs and maintaining them? And so that requires that we, um, 
follow steps, which requires the approval of the program before they get the incentive, but also requires us to have let the legislative body assign that. You know, pre-94 was just simply, you know, it's a reassignment. But here you've got the additional paperwork that goes goes with it. So we've done this, I think, three or four times before. Oh, okay. Yep. Is there any reason for us not to want to transfer a CRA? Uh, well, I guess if the Turk came back and, um, you know, they weren't treating their jobs or they were not compliant with zoning, <clears throat> Um, and they went before the Housing Council, and the Housing Council said, yeah, this is a problem child, and they asked for a reassignment. But this is pretty much house cleaning. There really shouldn't be any reason why you wouldn't want to reassign it. Yeah. Good for you, Tim. Yep. All right. That's uh, no other questions. An, Glenn, another, thanks a lot for explaining it so well. Another item that we have is, uh, this is just kind of a, uh, did I write this down somewhere? Oh, yeah. The tax, we're in the middle of uh, tax abatement uh, monitoring. The Turk Committee is going to meet at Wood County on the 23rd of March. Um, they're trying to limit the, the amount of people all in the same room, but anyone's free to attend. It's at 2.30. Um, you know, I think we sent a guy with you on that um, if you want to come down with the phone. But usually, you know, they've got the committee and they say the school donation agreement's being met, everything fine, yeah, yeah, and it's, you know, it's like a five-minute meeting, so you'd be coming down for 20 minutes and, mm -hmm. and, and leaving. But uh, we have 12 abatements that are being monitored. Um, as far as I know, they've all met their benchmarks, but the paperwork is still trickling in. And we have two abatements that are starting this year, Third Street Market, which is under the CRA program um, for all of their redevelopment, and then Yark Automotive. And then we have one of the bigger valuations rolling uh, off of the CRA program, so the full valuation of that building, meaning the OI headquarters, the full valuation will be going on the, going back on the tax rolls. Um, to boy, it, it's dating us, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just thinking. How long was that one? Is that building going to stay? Yeah, yeah. now we're wondering, who, is there is anyone in there? <laughs> yeah. Now that we got the full, you know. yeah. Yeah, now we, we get the full tail and it's empty. Yeah. It's still going to be a property tax value. So. We, um, it's been interesting trying to find, from last year's tax monitoring season, I think there's one person left that we worked with. You know, we sent emails out to people, you know, hey, thanks for, you know, working with us last year. Here are the forms, and you get back on deliverables, on deliverables. But it's like that with all the corporate um, CFOs and folks. Like over in Northwood, we do their stuff. Adiant, um, FedEx, all the big... You know, the big companies, I think I had seven bump backs of people that plant managers and CFOs and CPAs and everybody's moving on. But yeah, we will, uh, so my goal is to be back here uh, at your next meeting, I think uh, uh, April 7th, maybe, or 4th, or? Uh, yeah, the 9th council meeting, right? Okay. So it would be. Second, be, second Tuesday. Oh, the second Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. The 12th. The 12th. Okay, be here on the 12th with an update of the report that I give every, every year. Oh, great. So, yeah. So, right. yeah, that, that's coming. Yep. All right. Thanks, Lance. Thank Sorry. you very much. Good seeing you again. Good seeing you. All right. All right, number three is the annual Tree Street Assessment. Um, this is just housekeeping as well. It's the annual assessment. We have to declare the necessity for that. It brings in around $70,000. This isn't where we're, we're voting to put it on the ballot or anything. This is because that's every, how many years is that? No, this is, this is um, that would be the refuse that you're That's the refuse. Right. So it's three, three, we don't. It's just annual every assessment every year. And then yes. without going on the ballot, is that right. what you're saying? Ever, okay, that's been that way for years, hasn't it, Tim? Okay, so this is just a, a housekeeping item and that we just... It works that way because there was a street tree uh, district created back with ordinance 4386, mm -hmm. and so it doesn't have to go on the ballot. We do an assessment, we do it every year, although, to be honest, I'm going to look at 4386 next year and see if it can be a two-year thing so that it and lighting are every two year rather than 
we're all a little confused as to why we have to do street trees every year, but we get to do lighting every two years. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. So we, we're going to, but if we do it two years, I want them on the same two years. So mm -hmm. since lighting's not up till next year, we're not going to make a change till next year if we can. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, what I just said? Mm -hmm. So this is still for one year. So this was passed in 1986, right? Pre-Tim pre McCarthy? Tree. I was going to say, it was yeah. Tim, you were still. You can't blame that one on me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Point Tim, one mils, and it's, it's, and it's been that, that amount every, since the inception? Yeah. yeah. I think it went up a little so. bit. I think it went up. Um, um, the first year Laura was here, I believe that there was a reassessment oh, done. Oh, yeah. When the, uh, to, oh, and I yeah, think okay. we reassessed how we did it. Um, I think it was before Laura, though, that it went okay. up. I could be wrong on that one. But okay. I, I thought there was conversations about it going up right when I first got on council. Okay. I do I do think it went up one time, at least once. Mm -hmm. um, or got, we changed it from, like, a percentage to a mill or something oh. happened. Oh, I got you. At some point. Yeah. Um, but Great. so, as you know, we do a resolution of necessity. Then we do it after we get the actual estimates from Wood County. We will do an ordinance to proceed and, and an actual assessing ordinance. And those two pieces of legislation will come through to you at the same <coughs> time once we have the estimate from Wood County. Probably this summer. Okay. When, how quickly does this need to be passed? What's the time? The, the, this so resolution of necessity? What I'm asking is, is it something that has to be passed as an emergency or is it something that uh, we should do three readings for? I know it's something we've always had on here. We don't do it as an emergency. Okay. Uh, whether or not you are willing to vote on it next Tuesday is your decision. Okay. Have we had any, um, from, I know with the, being a street tree city, do we still get the uh, water nomination? We have, as far as I know. Okay. It'd be nice to know, make sure that we're still getting that recognition uh, if we're putting the money aside for it. I mean, I, I'm not disagreeing of the street trees. I want to make certain that we're still abiding by what our citizens expect with it. I will check with Rob on that. For sure. okay. And I tell you, this year I paid a little closer attention. I saw a lot of street tree work this year. You know, a lot of the pruning, really. Well, and and um, taking down a lot of dead ones. I was Especially just, on my street, I saw some big ones go down. So I know they've done a lot of, we've done a lot of work. Yeah, I and new ones. that seventy thousand dollars does not cover the cost of. There's no way it could have with the work that was done this year. Maintain. I think that's just more for the placements of the trees. For the yeah. And this year, I noticed a lot of new ones being planted too. My my neighbor across the street got a new one. Just make sure you don't call oh. candle mulch. You might get a blue uh, tag. Right. Yeah, I got to yep, yep. keep an eye on that. Yep. <laughs> you know, he doesn't forget anything. No. Doesn't <laughs> he's always needling me for stuff. I never changed. It just wore down the edge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's great. Okay, uh, yeah, number four, the investment advisory services agreement. Amber? Yes. Um, we sent or we prepared um, our RFQ request for qualifications, advertised it in the messenger um, two weeks as required, and we received five responses from different investment um, firms. And basically, what they will do is they will advise us, they will keep the money. Um, I just think it's a great time with rates going up. Um, this has been on my list since I started to, to look into. And I think it, it panned out well right now when rates are finally going up. Um, I want to look at redoing the investment policy make sure um, that we're taking advantage of all of the investment instruments that are out there for ORC that we can. I don't know that we've really been proactive on this front previously, and with the amount of funds that we do have, I think we could use those funds to our benefit to increase general fund revenue. Um, again, five firms responded. We, Kayla and I would like to recommend going with UBS. They had the lowest fees. They also include the safekeeping, um, which is the holding platform actually holding the funds. We wouldn't be required to have all of our money with them. 
We still do have some with Raymond James. We could keep some there. Uh, Huntington, obviously, will have some as well. Um, but this is just to look at our whole portfolio, our cash flow, just to make sure that we, like I said, taking advantage of what we can and making our revenue for the general fund as much as it can be. Um, some of their references were City of Oregon, Maumee, Sylvania, Toledo Public Schools, Finley Schools, Idaho Hill Schools, uh, City of Waterville. They just had a well-rounded portfolio of local governments as well, and we felt comfortable with them, especially, and then they had the lowest um, rates to offer. Who are we with now? We actually don't have a specific advisory agreement with um. anyone. That's why I feel like we haven't had one in a while. Not that I could find. It oh. looked like we um, had been using Raymond James and, like I said, Huntington, mm -hmm. but just for basically CDs. Yeah. Um, we haven't been proactive in the investment area, and I, I feel like this would be a great oh, time to get involved in it. You know what? <clears throat> what are we investing? I mean, just general fund monies that aren't needed immediately, or um, it can be, it's, we do have a policy already. It okay. needs updated. It's from like 08. Okay. Um, so they, this firm would also help us with that. ORC is very specific of what we can invest in. It's CDs up to $250,000 per bank offering, um, treasury security, more recently commercial paper. Um, they have to be rated in the top tier of two uh, rating firms. So it is very specific, but right now we have had a lot that's matured and quite frankly making point zero point <laughs> yes zero from eight. And what it's a shame that we can't make any with that. Right, but yeah. this will help us. Um, again, the laddering of investments is something I want to look into as well. A lot of times, from what I could find, it looked like we would just invest what was out there at the time. Um, the CDs, like I said, the commercial paper, we don't do. There wasn't a lot of research. And <coughs> I don't know that Kayla and I have the time <coughs> or expertise to do this. Um, UBS, their fee is 0 0.03 basis points. So it would come, the fee would come directly off of our Revenue income. Any estimate of what that what that cost is to us? On twenty five million dollars invested, which we may be around that. Um, I see it right times. here. It will fluctuate during tax time and mm -hmm. you know different times of the year when we have higher expenses of construction projects and things like that. Um, it would be about seventy five hundred dollars. I see that nine hundred per million. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then it, it does go down. So if we would, I'm, it's probably going to be around that 25 million, give or take. Mm -hmm. So that's 0 0.03 um, times the 25 million. It's like 7,500 dollars mm -hmm. a year. Seems like and again, well spent. Uh, we wouldn't be paying that out. It would just reduce the income. But right, I get that. Yeah, last year I don't think we even brought in a hundred thousand dollars in interest income. And wow. We can we can turn that around. Um, there are limits. We can't go out past five years. There are limits of um, how much we can invest at a time. So, you know, it's very specific, but I don't know that we're reaching our full potential. So this will yeah. definitely help us with that. Very little risk in this, I mean, for us. Absolutely. For the ORC taxpayers. doesn't allow for us to be in anything that's risky. Yeah. So for clarification, if I understand from reading this, is that these are selected based off of a point system versus a, a bid? Correct. It was Everything. request for qualifications, okay. kind of like they do for um, like architects mm -hmm. and engineers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a way that we can get a copy of that for all five? That's one of the things we've been getting in the service. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Here's, well, she came over this afternoon and wanted me to bring these, but yeah. Kate's yeah. learning to be pretty But we got, but yeah. we do have a summary sheet. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, just a little to have it so we can see. Yeah, that would be yeah. yeah, yeah. to us. Digitize the five. There's a way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it would take a lot of time or we'd have yeah. to cut them apart. I'm sure you read all that, though. Yeah. 
Yeah, both. Well, I, I trust you on that. But so there's a way to do it. It just you might be here all night. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to take these home. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. 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 Happy. You, you know, you read you read your kids' stories <laughs> when you put them to bed, don't you? Yeah, but I don't want to fall asleep too. <laughs> <laughs> that will make you fall asleep. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. So we need to uh, agree to to move this on, right? And so. I don't have an issue moving forward. I just want to make sure we get that summary so we can lift it over. Yep, absolutely. All right. All right. Thank you. We'll send that to you. You too, Tim. You're good. Yep. Three zero on that. You did the same thing for the street tree one because I don't remember. Did yeah? Oh yeah, we are three zero on the street trees. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I should have noted that. Did, did we clarify for when I go through three readings, or did you want to try to um, look at you as the chair? I, to go back it's, to that one by yeah no 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 that's all right i i'm thinking so i just don't see where we're going to have need more than one reading for discussion i mean would we be discussing this more than once i mean because it's because it's yeah i don't see, the I'm taxpayer. Be surprised that there would be a discussion but um the only reason i was talking about that is just it is still just a renewal of the assessment if it wouldn't make sense to do at least maybe one other additional reading and counting this as one Sure, um, I'm okay. I, I I do it one, but if folks like two, we can do two. I mean, this just it, it's this just doesn't generate any interest outside these four walls. <laughs> I don't disagree with you at all, Tim. I yeah, I'm inclined to just uh, we'll, we'll wait. Do one reading, and then if for some reason something comes up, you can always ask that we have a second date. Yes. Okay. I don't find either way. I just uh... no. I think if anyone wants two readings, we we should do it if someone feels that's appropriate. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Should we ask council at that time? We could talk to see if anyone wants to wait and read and do an extra reading, and then we can. I'll I'll make a note to uh, to ask about that second reading. Yes. Um, ask. Yeah. Okay. Before I introduce. It. All right. Sorry to bring it back. Well, actually, we get a chance to vote on that when I say, yes. you know, we're going to waive the three. Well, the council will get a chance to uh, vote on that and have a discussion right there on that one. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and then Glenn's, I, I'm being a lax here, but uh, the legislation with uh, the CRA, we're all in agreement to move that as well, right? Yeah. That, yeah, that had no, no financial impact. No. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I just missed all my notes on the street tree if we hadn't done that one or not. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm caught up. Uh, so now we're moving on to uh, Levis, Levis assessment. That's another housekeeping thing, isn't it? Um, this, is, this one's a little bit different. We'll see what Tim remembers from yeah. 2006. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Back in 06, there was a cooperative agreement entered into by the city and the Lucas County Port Authority and the owner, um, Levis Commons, I don't know how that's worded, Levis Town Square Land LLC. Mm -hmm. And what happened after that is the port issued the bonds to pay for all the infrastructure at Levis. So the roads, the hydrants, the water sewer lines, paving, the parking, street lighting, um, all that debt was issued through the port, and then to be paid back from the property owner through special assessments over the years. So they have all been paid off. The most recent was in November of last year. Um, Hilton Garden Inn was sold, and the seller paid that in full. So that paid off the bonds. Um, since then, the new property owner, this started when they received their tax bill mm -hmm. and the assessment was on there because we have to tell the county back in September what to assess. So it was a timing issue. Oh. Yeah. Um, so they are going to be required to pay that assessment, $400,000. We will then have to reimburse that, we will refund that. So this legislation will um, help us ask the county to remove that for the second half of this year. And then there will be none going forward as all the bonds for that are paid off. 
How is that still charged if it's been paid off? I understand the, I know I understand the September the November time, but if it was paid off at the the title change, wouldn't that show off the tax bill? No. We are the ones that tell the county, we assess, we tell the county what to put on the tax bill. And we didn't even know about it until so the tax did, bill came out in twenty two. So where did the money go that they paid it off with in the sale? Directly to the bond agency. And they oh, so it, it, it circumvented us all. Correct. 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 Usually the money would flow through us, through the assessment. Um, the county would pay us, we'd pay the court, and then the court would pay off the debt, or you know, pay down on the debt. Mm -hmm. This time it went directly to the bond. Um, I do now have confirmation from them in writing that it's all paid off very specific with the Q-SIP and everything. And I have also, because it's millions of dollars, confirmed with the Port Authority directly that this was in fact paid off because Kimber and I are trust but verify, so we didn't want to take an assessment off that hadn't been fully paid, but this has now been fully paid. Is there any way I'm thinking just from being a business owner, if I got a bill like that and was told I have to pay it to get the money back, I wouldn't be thrilled with that at all. <laughs> is there anything that we can do to... There is not. I tried. We went. Um, the Port Authority's legal. They had Bricker, Eckler look at it. They recommended that in order to avoid penalties and fees um, that they... Pay. Can't even waive the penalties and fees? It's all the county. We can't. We can't, okay. we can't work with the auditor's office on that? They will not. And we had a different one for utility that they are very specific and they they have their rules. And even the the um, attorneys for the Port Authority I have in writing where they said that they need to pay it because as a city, as a port, we cannot circumvent or ask them to change anything. I'm still trying to figure out why they would pay the money directly to the bond and not to us and that closing is that more of a title company. I'm because we weren't on the debt. The bond was outstanding and had gone into default and had not been paid on. So the advice from their attorneys when they purchased the property was to pay the bond off in full. The debt wasn't through us. We were seeking the pass through. So the money was owed directly to the bond company didn't have to go through us, but because the assessment went on in September, even paying directly off in November, once it's on in September, it cannot be removed from the taxes for the first half. So who who can make that? I know it's that's not a change that we can make, but no one can make that. No the one. ORC can't make a change in that. No one will make that change. The Wood that, County audit, auditors are very firm that once something has been set by us for assessment, it's it final. is final. What I'm, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, with how that rule is and look into the future, is there a, an, a remedy in the future that could be discussed to avoid a situation like this, even though this is a one-off situation? I think that that's a higher revised code and have to be and, say legislative. and really an auditor issue. I mean, it's the auditors, they control the taxes. We're just sending the assessment. No. So we, I mean, it's not really in our, even in our jurisdiction to control. So when they make that payment, how quickly does it arrive to the city? We do not have the second or the first half payment yet. I'm expecting probably late March we will get um, the settlement from the county and it will have the breakdown of everything on there, um, what it's for, and then we will turn around that payment okay. quickly. You'll also see legislation later because we'll need to appropriate that. So this isn't the end of, of I'm the- I'm sure it's not. Yes. Just. I, I frustrating if I was in the business I would not be happy happy as well because that's 400,000 that's going to be tied up for yeah. quite a while I, 
it sounds to me it could be tied up for several weeks, if not months. And I will say that they were way more understanding than I think I would have. Well, they're probably more understanding than what I am right now. Then. <laughs> And they're out of Florida, and they have talked to them several times. This isn't a matter. Maybe the sunshine helps. This isn't a matter that we could control in any way. Oh, I understand. I'm just. I want to ask the questions. Right. Because I think it's important to ask these questions. Right. But we understand as well, and if there's something that we have to talk to the auditor or talk to our state house about this one issue, it's something they should be looking at to see about remedying so a business is out that money especially if they are a larger business that is investing in the state or in the community you want to see that money people <coughs> use for jobs or other investments. this is something that is um just not helpful for the business at all but uh, i do plan to support this okay <laughs> I just would love to see if there's a way to expedite it, but apparently there's not much we can do. Yeah. Um, I did set up, we will receive a wire transfer from the county. Previously, they sent checks and they were large amounts. So we will get it faster than we have in the past. So that's why there's multiple uh, city with uh, one Perrysburg accounts out there when they find those checks. <laughs> Deposit them. Hmm. Okay, so that. That's going through on to council. And well, next we're talking about the ARPA funds. I am assuming, I see you have legislation prepared for that. So, so but do all the committees have a chance to? Let me explain that. Um, I don't think you need legislation for the ARPA funds. Okay. There's nothing in this rule that says we have to legislate what we're going to spend the funds on. We have to spend them according to the rules and we will get audited and we have to report what we spend them on. But I think Amber is in agreement with, with me that we don't actually have to do a resolution. Right. However, President Smith has asked or proposed that council pass a resolution. I don't think there's anything that prohibits you from doing that either. Oh, okay. So this was drafted at the request of President Smith. Just in the interest of transparency. To, yeah, this okay. is what we're utilizing. Show Absolutely. what we're us utilizing them for. And we can have a discussion as well as council as a whole. Even though we've discussed in each of the committee, mm -hmm. council can then have a say on, do we agree with where these funds are using or if there's anything sure. that we would like to uh, see changed in that. I would suggest that, just kind of based on how these conversations have gone, we don't need to take this resolution back to all the committees. It's, we're at a point where all seven of you need to discuss this, pass this, not pass this, amend this, but three at a time is not going to really accomplish the goal of advising the administration how you would like the funds passed. Okay. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I, think, I think it's, it's at a point where we should have the city council. Are you council. thinking then when we have discussion on this resolution uh, next week that we're going to make a decision on all these? I believe so. We still have some that would encumbered it with, uh, okay. um, but uh, there was definitely a lot of conversations at a lot of the committees and I believe it's important for a council to have this. I think so. Yeah, I think they've all had enough discussion where we can all put them together now and talk about it, right? Um, okay. Are you looking, because this is our favorite question today, are you looking for this to be a first reading of this on Tuesday with the anticipation that um, there will be lots of discussion and then a second reading? Yeah, I, I I'm think it definitely that. needs a second reading. Yeah, th this is a substantial amount of funds and different projects associated with it. I mean, you, you see what other cities have done <clears throat> with this money. Good guys, some of them gone out and done a bunch of public hearings, you know, and convened a bunch of <clears throat> neighborhood meetings. And I, I think this is the sort of thing, at least the numbers got to get out so the public can react and say, <clears throat> what do you, why this? I, I agree. And there, there's one thing I'll just make a comment as well that we'll probably bring up in conversation is there was a, um, 
conversation at the recreation committee, even though this is pretty rec heavy, yeah. um, to look at utilizing funds for the McKinley Woods Park area, right over there, Cove Court, um, to put a uh, bring a firm in to design that as a passive park to start the process of turning that into an actual park. Yeah, I, and what <clears throat> the recreation committee didn't want to include that. We 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 did. We we brought that up as a conversation. That's not on this, but we want to bring that as a conversation for council to hold. Okay. okay. Good. So but we don't really have a number that we can. We we do have a number now. Um, let me pull up my email. At least we got an idea of a number. Give me a second here. I, I get the look on my face here because I'm trying to remember. <laughs> What email it was that uh, oh. Bridget sent? Okay. Do you want us? I, I got that. We, are you asking that we add that McKinley Park as one of the listed items? I think that's something that councils are going to probably want to have. Um, I, one of the conversations that came up was this is a once in a lifetime fund, and it's better to use it uh, in a once in a lifetime way to create something more permanent. Um, and by utilizing this to create a, a park and to get that process going would be a permanent use of those funds. And let me... Absolutely. Because things like fencing for playgrounds can be done other times. Yeah, uh, they're, well, there's still a balance, a balance available for $450,000. Sure, that's yeah. pretty substantial. And the estimate from Bergman for the design and public hearings and everything on this uh, was coming in about $82,000. 82? Yes. Just for the uh, design? So or? it'd be um, the public engagement, um, uh, concept plans, construction drawings, reviewing uh, with the city, um, final plans, and everything in that. Oh, all right. I can forward this over to both of you as well. Well, that's easy enough, but it's not going to really cut into our balance too much if we still have something left to build it. Yeah, yeah to actually kind of build it. After the design, keep in mind, it, to build a park is multiple millions of dollars, even a passive park. So mm -hmm. just throw oh, yeah, it out there. Infrastructure there, yeah. I'll forward you the email so you have that. Okay. That came actually uh, just a Well, then that's definitely something worth discussing when we, yeah. in our, yeah, we'll get at least two readings on that. All right? Yeah. Jo Jonathan, yeah. you're on rec, right? Yeah. What's the only item I see on here that I'm puzzled about is the all-inclusive playground at Woodlands. Now, is where would that be? That's I mean, going to be upgrading Ford Imagination since oh, okay. you can't re re uh, find parts for it anymore. Uh, it's not necessarily ADA compliant as what when it was built it was. Now it's not. Interesting. Uh, so it was with the mulch. Um, wheelchairs still struggle to get through to there. Um, there's other issues with that, but trying to bring that back up and putting in some new amenities in there as well. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So it, it's a placeholder. Uh, we're still not sure what's going to happen, but uh, for imagination needs to be up. Upgrade. I don't know if you've been there. It's. It's. I've, I've probably not been out there to look at that in a couple of years. Yeah, it's. Uh, um, always seems to have a, something falling apart on there anymore. Oh, okay. I think for a while there, though, I think there was half the swings missing. It's looking bad lately. Like, yeah, oh, okay. I'm taking my granddaughter there. So. Okay. So, um, and that'd be nice to have a inclusive park on each side of town. Yeah, one on the yeah. west yeah. side. It may not be as uh, extravagant as the no, one in Rotary Park, but something. it'd be nice to get some upgrades in there. Mm-hmm. Well, and if we could do something with McKinley Woods, that would help too. Because I looked at that and I thought, well, here we go. Now we're all focused on parks, yeah. you know, on the quote unquote east side of town and the center of town, whereas the west end <laughs> is always getting the uh, shaft. shaft. And, and all the population's gone out there. So. Yeah, and that's why I, I think McKinley Woods is something that uh, I agree um, with the, the other members of the Recreation Committee that we need to prioritize that with us as well. Absolutely. So that'll be a change that we'll be looking to have that discussion with that group. Okay. I, I um, well. what, how we do that, I don't know. I don't know if we utilize the funds or if we make a couple changes on a few things on there as well. Yeah. And I know with the rotary pickleball court amenities, that was in regards to sunshades and, and some other things with that. Um, the Bicentennial Park, uh, that is something that needs to be updated as well. I think. Oh yeah, that one I, <clears throat> I've seen, I, I had not 
visited Fort Imagination. I didn't know it's gone down that far. I mean, yeah, unfortunately. I mean, just, it's still a good playground the kids enjoy. But yeah, because I, I see people using it when yeah. I'm at the shelter. I take my kids to almost all the playgrounds. <laughs> yeah. When things yeah. get broke, though, it's, they, they can't get the parts to it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Amber, did you have something you want to say? I do. I have something to note. Um, Kayla and I did go through different webinars on this final um, ARPA money. And I just wanted to note that some of the things on this list don't fall under categories that are allowed as expenses Oops. from ARPA. So, in the final ruling, they did allow up to $10 million to be used for revenue replacement, which then allows you to spend the money on anything that is technically a government service, which these are. Mm -hmm. So we will be using the category of revenue replacement, which then opens up your possibilities, especially, you know, as you, you know, you said, we see what other cities are doing and, you know, they still, a lot of the expense categories, they still want you to link how you mitigated COVID with these funds. So we are on our side, on our financial side of it, reporting side of it, we are using revenue replacement, which then makes um, more yeah, options. A bit hand sanitizers at all the playground. Is that <laughs> <laughs> We're mitigating COVID by creating outdoor playground. Absolutely. You think that that would be something Which, that we have too many kids at one playground in, in the community, so we have to spread them out to other ones. Jeez. Yeah, you would think that that would be easy, but no. Wow. Yeah, so revenue replacement, and then these are our expenditures. One of the things on the reporting side um, that'll be coming up here for us in April, too, is that even though we'll be reporting it as lost revenue, we'll still be reporting the different projects that we're using the money, the lost revenue for um, in their system, the way that it's currently set up. Okay. Um, one thing, when you do go back to rec and talk about this, maybe I'll think about, I'll start thinking of a name for this park. Because um, I don't think we ought to call it the McKinley Woods Park. No, we'll have a different name for it at that yeah, point. We'll, so we'll get to, to that one. What, yeah, what, when it when it's when they start this design, yeah, yeah. it's just start Maybe thinking about a name. Part of the actual uh, Bergman study, or we can figure out something else. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Great. Back to the beginning of this, Kate. How if you don't have a resolution? I, I'm I'm puzzled from the very beginning. How how would you spend it? You have to report how you spend it. Okay. You, we set the budget though, wouldn't we? Yeah, I was going to say under the. As a, we could just do it as amendments to the budget. It wasn't. Oh. It was already oh, I in the budget. Already it, I think we already put it in the budget. Yeah, oh. you already passed the expenditure. And anything, obviously, over $25,000 will come back to council anyway. Yeah. Oh, but, okay. Uh, but so you'll we'll see it over and over. Well, I, I misunderstood because I thought what Kate was saying is council wouldn't necessarily have any say in how this money is spent. But that's. You're, you're saying well, that's a question whether you do it through the budget or right. You pass a budget. This was in the budget. Anything over twenty five thousand dollars, you pass as an expenditure. This specific resolution of we would like the money spent on these projects is not required. Mm -hmm. It's oh. not hurting anything. It's mm -hmm. not violating any of the rules. It's yeah. No, but I like it the fact that it gets us in a discussion. Right, and yeah, it's, and it's open it. and it's mm -hmm. public and it's. It helps resolve the issue that we currently have of everybody wants something different out of this pie. So if we can come to a cohesive decision on there's only so much pie. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> the one thing that I will tell you is that $2.2 .2 million for all of us individually is just a massive amount of money, but it disappears very quickly in oh. a municipal budget and projects. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's government. I think that's just one of those things that yeah. what's nice about this, while not required, is that it sort of hones in the requests to try to stay within that budget rather than listing things that we're just not going to ever be able to pay off because mm -hmm. it's beyond the scope of oh, the money we're means. getting. Yeah. There is a, and as we're talking about this too, there's one other thing that's not on here that I'll probably bring up for a conversation and may not have to be in this, but something for us to look at. And that'll come out of recreation as well. But the uh, bathrooms over at Rotary uh, don't have heat, so they get shut off in the winter. 
And so one of the reasons that uh, those bathrooms were installed, they were upgraded for handicap accessibility as well as adult size changing tables for the, in conjunction with the uh, inclusive playground. Well, those are closed in the winter. Um, and when we have nice days like we did this past weekend, mm -hmm. um, the only uh, bathrooms available are Porter Johns and um, it's not necessarily conducive for the use of the park. So that's something I, I want to put in the back of both of your minds as well. That, okay. That's a conversation we may need to have over this next that, year. That did come up I, once before. I did heard you say that building didn't get designed to have it any It wasn't designed, heat. so they were, they're still looking so to see looking what, at it would do. what it would take to put heat yeah. in there. And, but I wanted to at least make you aware that that is a situation that mm -hmm. um, we'll have to to look at here moving forward to see if we can do that or what other things we might be able to accomplish. Are, are other bathrooms in the other parks, are they heated? I don't believe so. I think they're all locked right now. Uh, other than the one uh, uptown there on 2nd Street, I think that that one gets opened in the winter time, I believe, okay. doesn't it? I think 2nd Street open is currently locked because of vandalism, but don't oh. hold to that. Okay, but I thought that one had heat. We, I mean, it certainly has a lot of power. I think that in an effort to curb the vandalism issue, we just locked them all. For the yeah, that's, that's just a shame that had to happen. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. I feel like I heard that at staff. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Everyone told me to the So it sounds like we're all in agreement to pass this one on to mm -hmm. council. Yep. This resolution. All right. And that takes us to the finance director's report. Okay. We have the expenditures for February it's over $5,000. If anyone has any questions for us, I have a couple. Okay. I have that here. Um, the Lorraine County Recycler, I don't remember ever seeing that. Is that because it just now went over 5000 or Potentially. Yeah. That is a monthly um, BFI yeah. invoice. And I, know, I guess I, okay, that's all it is, just a monthly BFI? Yes. All right. I guess maybe it's been there before. Uh, the, the three Columbia gas ones, um, what are those exactly? I, uh, that's a that service that one looks like West Boundary. Where, where are those addresses? Um, <coughs> West Boundary, I'm saying, is DPU, no. utilities, um, Fort Meigs, I'm guessing, is the fire station, and then Roach the service. service. And again, these might not have hit that $5,000 threshold previously. But yeah, they're just, they all seem to be prices. just over. Yeah. I, and everyone got a major bill this last month, so. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's, <laughs> right. Harrisburg just got a little bit bigger. You said one, West Boundary might be utilities, because that's East Boundary. West Boundary is Route 25. Oh, yeah. Well, it's also weird that it's one. Yeah. That it could be. That's why, that, that's the only thing I was questioning. Yeah, is, I'll look up yeah, that one and send it to you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, no big deal. If, it's, if that's what it is, yeah, you don't. Wastewater treatment plan. Oh. Yeah, that makes more sense. It's a wastewater treatment plant. All right. That's why it's a little higher, too. They, they tend to use a lot of... Great. Okay. No, no. That, you don't have to follow up on okay. that. Um, and then the, uh, the, JEDS, the JEDS payment, uh, I was just kind of curious. What, what does that... That's the quarterly that? tax payment. It's tax sharing that goes to Toledo. Um, again, it's the area bordered by 475. Get this wrong. Roached in. Not sure of the other boundary. Um, but it was from when the agreement went in with the water from Toledo. This was added as we would um, share the tax revenue just on commercial parcels out there. Um, and it's the income. Oh. All right. Their portion of the income on those businesses. Okay, so we do. We Alice sits on the, on a committee that we do have a say in that. J Jed's is uh, the joint no. economic development. Well, pardon me. We don't have much of a say at all, Jed's. No, no. no. That's what. It, it's an agreement from years ago, and oh. I can I can look at details for you, but I mean years ago, just like the water department used to be years ago, so it's a. Uh, more benefit of Toledo than it is for us. Yeah. Right. That's why I was just questioning what, what benefit do we get on this? But we Nothing. Because they were you know, extending service out here and supposedly not getting sufficient okay. uh, 
support for it. You know, they're giving away the city's water to the suburbs. And suburbs they weren't giving sufficient support, but they were charging us an arm and a leg for water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Those are the only questions that I have. I, you guys, do you have anything? Uh, I, I do see that we got the kayak launch mm -hmm. purchased in there, so I'm, I'm happy and thrilled about that. I don't kayak, but I know how heavily used that's going to be. And there's also a grant that we got from Wood County for a portion of that. Awesome. So, yes. oh, I remember so that. we'll get reimbursed. Yes. yes. So it's just, I'm just happy to see that on there because I know that's going to be a huge hit this summer. Where's Where's that going to be at? Four Orleans? That's going to be down at Hood Park. Hood, oh, Hood. So it's going to be in that docks over there. You can walk right up to it, park down there, take your well, kayak. And don't worry, I won't be doing that. Yeah. And, sure. it's, where it was. and it's well, ADA. You, you can walk down there. walking distance for you, too. <laughs> Yeah. We'll just make sure to put some blue tags around your house. Too. <laughs> I'll come down and watch you, Jonathan. I, I, I don't kayak, but uh, I can't get three kids in there, so I want to be able to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, we're moving on to health insurance then. If we don't have, you don't have anything on the expenditures? Nope. Okay. Health insurance? I no. just I want them to turn down the thermostat all those buildings. Yeah. <laughs> we're a bunch of sweatshirts and stuff. Right. <laughs> okay, the health and welfare fund, um, the ending balance at the end of February, we were up to $359,000. Um, so that's a, that's a good thing. Not a lot of claims. Um, however, I've seen some large ones already for March. So yeah, we're always there's your warning. Uh, yeah, yeah, we always got yeah, that warning up and down. Yep, it is. It's the nature of it. But nothing major to report there. Mm -hmm. um, I also have income tax revenue, and oh, Mr. Yeah. Weber gets a gold star on this. Yes, uh, I why because I, uh, asked. I I asked about it. Yes, yes. I called Steve and <laughs> and uh, yes, I said whoa. I, so that's, that's kind of, and he explained it very well. Did you? Did anyone else notice that that uh, in the net big profit? Difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, right. Go ahead. You want, I'll let you go sure. ahead. And, our February income tax revenue was up 102% over February of last year. Um, there's a there's actually two payments um, that we are anticipating having to refund that total 1.4 million. So considering that, we're really only up 11% for the actual month of February, and then year to date, we're really up 9% um, for the two months. It has to do with um, the Ohio Business Gateway, I'm sure you've heard of, where companies can pay their income tax. We received a payment that is from a Perrysburg company that previously did not show profits. So they hadn't, or you know, they had enough offsetting that, no. that they, they weren't paying much. So this is significant amount that we anticipate we will have to refund sometime later this year. So there's a caveat of income tax looks good, but... Yeah, well, the state of Ohio actually pays it to us for them, and, that, and you can't get answers out of them. Correct. That's what it was explained to me, yep. what exactly, and then if we're expecting this again in three months, or not at all, or we have to give some back. Okay, that's... Yep. We'll know more. Steve did a great job explaining it to me. <laughs> yeah, and he's been working to get the details. And mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess time insane. will tell. So, Time's going to, we'll tell. Let's see what absolutely. happens. Absolutely. Right? Okay. So don't encumber that. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I, I said, we'll make sure we won't. <laughs> I'm a little concerned, though. I see that our withholdings are down a little bit from this time last year. They are. Um, we have seen a significant drop in withholding due to what we assume is people working from home. Yeah. We were warned on that. Yeah. Yep. But individual payments are up, which is probably for the same reason. The opposite, yes. The other yep. side. So they will continue to, to monitor that and report to you. Um, but yeah, and we're also trying to keep a tally um, as they go through 2021 returns and people that did change their withholding. And if it is because um, working from home, that, so we can kind of get a grasp on the quantity yeah, of them. Yes, now. yes. Okay, yep. <clears throat> Excellent. Good, no other questions on taxes? Um, 
in other business, you know, there's a topic that I know you two have talked about when you were on planning and zoning. Yeah. If and you want Jonathan, to like to yeah. talk about this again. So I, I sent an email to all of you yeah. on Monday that uh, I'd like to bring this up for a conversation. Um, I know we talked in planning and zoning about Airbnbs. We had some complaints back then. <clears throat> uh, and my concern isn't about regulation as much as it is uh, with Airbnbs. If you look online, you go to Paris for Airbnbs, you'll see a lot of different homes that are advertising nightly rates. Um, so it makes me, there's also a large contingent of people that would rather go to an Airbnb versus rent a hotel room. So the, the question that I have is, is exploring if an Airbnb should be part of the bed tax because they are essentially acting as if they are a hotel with nightly um, rates. And it's not a short-term vacation rental. It's, uh, we're coming in for the weekend, we're coming in for a night, mm -hmm. we're looking for a room to stay. Um, I'm not sure what the uh, legality is with that, so I was hoping Kate might be able to look into that and maybe report back on other communities um, that are doing something similar, um, whether it's even a registration where we have to do that at the plan zoning side. Uh, we would probably have to define a zoning um, classification for Airbnbs as well, because if memory serves me correct, per the bed tax, the way it states is hotels and motels have to pay it. And we have a definition in our code that hotels and motels are those that rent out more than six, five, I saw the hand over there, five rooms. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, I think it's something that we should have a, a serious conversation on because we're spending a lot of money as a community um, through the bed tax for the marketing with the CVB board um, to bring in more people. We have the, um, the Great American Race that's coming in June. We have other events that we're always trying to bring in that is going to bring more people that will be utilizing this, yet they're not contributing towards the funds that we're using to, uh, that they're benefiting off of. Uh, it's more of a way to create a level playing ground with the hotels in here as well. <clears throat> Those ordinances you just sent out, John. <clears throat> they didn't really touch base <laughs> off that, that, but. What, what are they doing? So those tend to have a lot more on the registration side and the zoning side um, and regulations. I just grabbed a few just to, to show that there's municipalities that are starting to talk on this. There's uh, other smaller municipalities that are on there as well. So I was trying to do some digging on that. I saw Yellow Springs, Ohio, I think was one that has something. Um, there's another. Uh, community out in Summit County, can't remember that off the top of my head, um, that has some, some language out there. Uh, I, I don't want us to a point where we're looking to ban a, a property owner from being able to utilize this. Mm -hmm. um, I would, I believe though that uh, since we're seeing an influx of them and that uh, individuals are using these versus hotel, especially after the pandemic to avoid having to interact with too many different people, um, that that's something that we should be looking at and having a conversation. Mm -hmm. I wonder how that's monitored and enforced. Um, we would probably have to have a registration. And through I registration. Know the state is looking at legislation yeah, you're using that Amber Tennis, <clears throat> uh, I think, to limit our ability to require, to limit their existence. Yeah. Is that a fair way yes, to say that? Yes. Yeah. Limit our ability to limit their existence. Okay, but then, but, but we can still not specifically, to the best of my knowledge, and all this is the first I've heard that this is what Jonathan was thinking. Address the taxation issue. Correct. So, I'll have to do some digging into how you. Would do I'm just kind of curious to see if other communities are doing it. If that's something that we should be looking at. Um, I'm trying to find it, but it, there's so, so few communities that really have a CBB as well. I do see that, I think the Cincinnati has an excise, excise tax. Uh, I'm just not talking well at all today. Uh, excise tax. Thank you. Um, I was not. I think they had a 3% if I saw on there. Yeah, that's what I read when I wrote it down to 315. Uh, yeah. My thought is that I would see that something similar with a uh, bed tax um, for the short term rentals. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I hate to say it, I don't even remember what our um, bed tax percentage is. It's three. It is three percent. Yes. Okay. Mm. So it'd be in a similar way, and it'd be a way to help uh, 
continue to help with the promotion of the city of Perrysburg that these Airbnbs are also uh, benefiting from as well. Some of them are really nice if you go on there and look at them. Really? Uh, I almost thought, you know, I'll get that and stay away from the kids for a couple of days. What are they ranging from $100 a night? Uh, some of them were $70 a night, some of them were $100 a night. Or, uh, most were, I think, were under $100 a night. To rent what? A room or maybe a, uh, a whole house. Some of them, some of them are a, uh, some people have actually have a secondary structure that they're running out. Oh. Um, so, I mean, I'm looking at right now. Well, I'm sure they're recording all that. That's against <laughs> zoning though, isn't it, to have rentals in there? I mean, some, there's one here that's a, a private room for $35 a night. Um, another one is a $55, 72. Um, there's 91, 84. These are in Perrysburg? These are in Perrysburg. Wow. So we're up to around 20 or 30 that you're seeing listed. It could. I, I can't uh, distinguish if they're in the township or the city. Yeah. Wasn't it just a, just a, two or three years ago you guys started talking about this and planning and zoning? And there was only just a it handful. It was like so brand new that yeah, we yeah, didn't people didn't know what, to know do what it was. Yeah. Constitutional issues. I, I was, okay, you must see. There's seminars from around all the, so here's, the lawyers. So here's a map just inside. Oh, wow. I have it. All up I'll, I'll because shoot. Because of COVID, there's been so much about other stuff. I think Airbnb's kind of went on the back burner for a while because nobody was going anywhere. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And the, this is now coming back up. Um, I have no intention of ever letting strangers look in my home, but I suppose if other people are comfortable with it, good for them. Well, if I if I see something, I'll shoot it your way because I I've seen post pandemic some of those seminars are now coming. Exactly. You know, a lot of them are they're not in person, which I haven't. I still haven't seen an in person seminar come through for me. Everything that I've yeah. seen is still all virtual. Yeah, but I'll I'll send it your way because I I've looked at a couple of the the course programs and you know obviously they're they talk about zoning. Um, then they do talk about registration. I, I didn't see the mention of taxation though, but, but that's interesting. It, maybe it was in there and I didn't, I didn't look at it real what carefully. About Cincinnati one here in front. I also wonder about inspection, like yeah. fire or occupancy or health department. That was a long conversation we had too with the planning and zoning. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, because there, there's a, a lot of what ifs on there and. No. And we don't. That inspection is a county inspection. Like yeah. Health department is county. Right. But what about like a fire marshal? So, I mean, I think they they do hotels. You know, the yeah, fire would inspect hotels. So, hotels. yeah, I don't, I don't know how that would work. Yeah, that's and, that's and that's Cincinnati, that's Cincinnati that's puts all their revenue into an affordable housing trust fund. Okay. Not that, not their CVB. Yeah, but that's a. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting too. We can watch the progression of that house bills at five sixty three. So I don't know. I have even think. Yeah. Is that what it is? It's four, a, yeah. That was interesting. Yeah. Four twenty two. Four twenty two. Four twenty two. It's got Alice all with her fluffle. Fill me in on that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's one for utilities that, um, and they pulled back some of the language so. Alice is only half of her now. Okay. Um, but it has to do with our ability to assess um, for individuals who don't pay water, their water bill. No, and yeah. How we can right. Yeah, I, I remember it now. So. Yeah, I would just love to know um, what other communities are looking at with that. I mean, I. I would try to look into some stuff from Ohio Municipal League. The only thing that was coming up was actually this as well. So they were, they're more focused on, on the home rule side of things than they are about um, that portion of the, the revenue. But uh, I'm wondering if there's something we should look at a little more. I would love to see if we could have a conversation maybe in the month and take some time to do some research. And I'm assuming we'll probably end up kicking it over the plane in this zone as well to have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. I have an interest that's going to love this assignment. <laughs> Well, it's the, it would be a fun one. Yeah. Something new and interesting that he can yeah. learn quite a bit on. So 
that was really the whole reason I want to bring it. It's something I've been thinking about for a while, and you know, now that uh, for the most part things are coming back to normal, mm -hmm. um, hopefully we're going to more of an endemic stage of of uh, the pandemic, and uh, these are going to be continued. People are going to continue to travel. They're going to continue to want to get out more. Um, if the gas prices at, don't go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, once again, it's five like bucks that. a gallon. Yeah, <laughs> sad enough. You're going to be staying home bill. again. Well, if, if once you look at this, uh, if you have a chance to just do the search, you can look at the map, and this is just Airbnb. So there's other sites that people can go to and, and check out, but there's probably about 15 or 20 in the city of Perrysburg, just from looking at the map, and there's several in the outskirts of the city as well. Wow. A lot of them are actually here in the center of town. Yeah, I guess that doesn't surprise me. I, you know, well, what's the other term for it? Bart? <clears throat> um, you know, where you, uh, you Rental room. The RBO. Oh, yeah. Verbal, uh, verbal sermon? No, yeah, verbal, but the, like a bed and breakfast. Oh, bed and breakfast. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, I know we had those around for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but Airbnb seems to have replaced bed and breakfast. Well, that's I, I so an air bed and breakfast. <laughs> yeah. And, and one of the things you sent out, Jonathan, it, it seemed to suggest they, they distinguish between like a bed and breakfast when you do, you start commercially advertising or something yeah then it becomes a business because the airbnb is more you advertise through one of these postings and there's other ones out there that do that than just airbnb yeah. some of them are probably on all the sites or some that may be only on one or the other oh. um, so there's there's a few of these out there and it's something that we need to have that conversation i mean I don't want to limit it. I, I can tell you if it was me personally and someone was doing it next to my home, I don't think I'd be really too thrilled to, to have strangers yeah, coming in. We had the folks right over here who had yeah. in Aaron, and they weren't very thrilled. We were kind of, we threw our hands up. We didn't quite know what to do with it. Yeah, but I don't think there really would be too much to do if, um, unless we really look at the regulation side. But I know, I just know that personally I wouldn't want to see it, but um, mm -hmm. if we can't stop it, we should be making sure that they're paying into the same funds that it, the hotels and the motels are paying into and that they're benefiting from. Yeah. Although you can see the homeowner saying, look, I pay income tax to the city. So does hotels. I, you know, <laughs> why, why do I have to pay more? No. But no, I, I think it's definitely something we should look at. No. Pass it on to like guests that. Well, let's, let's see what we can find out some more information. Yeah bring it up for conversation but just something that's on on my mind okay anything else come before the committee no sir all then we'll call that adjourned